Welcome back to Code Creative. I'm Travis Tolson. Do you have an intro what? theme song and I just didn't hear it? No. Oh, come on. We need like an intro theme song. I used to. I hmm. used to. I scrapped it. Like, da-da, da-da, or something. No, no. Mine was chill. It, I, it was called Good Day and it, it, it felt good. Yeah, that's right. Well, you married someone with no chill, so. Hi, Gabby. Andrew. Hey, everyone. So, All right. What? Okay. Like in the true spirit of Code Creative Live, like half of, if not three quarters of everything that you've talked about has probably been because you and I get to talking and uh, complaining to each other about some problem that we've seen and dealt with for quite a while in this industry, right? Yeah. And tonight is no exception. Yeah, I'm coming out of retirement because you got me ranting. I love getting you <laughs> ranting. Um, so today we are taking a stab at public forums on the ServiceNow platform. Dun, so, dun, dun. yeah, so this is becoming more and more of a use case in the uh, CSM space. Hey, how's it going, Casey? Uh, Public forms is becoming more and more prevalent in the CSM space. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there. I've seen Disney Plus using it. I've seen UC Davis using it. I've seen um, State of Tennessee's using it. A number of counties are using it. Uh, basically, I'm seeing it all over the place. And um, and why are we using it? Can you tell them about the, the little meme I sent you today? The meme? You didn't see it? I sent him this thing on Reddit, and it was a pie chart that said, like... Um, Oh, I don't even remember now. But basically, it was pointing <laughs> out the fact that nobody wants to actually log in to, to submit a form or anything like that. It's a huge pain in the butt. Yeah. Especially in my realm of government, like average Joe citizen wanting to report a pothole. Like, no, he doesn't want to create an account to report a pothole. He just wants to tell everybody in public works, hey, go fix this. So, yeah, and it's anonymous forms. It's a really great use case, and it's it's one that on one hand I love. On the other hand, it terrifies me because, um, as I've found over the years, there are a lot of examples of it being done in an insecure way uh, that can really put your instance at use. And I want to start out by talking about that a little bit. So I've set up a basic uh, feedback form over here. And currently this one's authenticated, uh, but the same principles would apply. Um, so basically, if I have a public form, I can turn around and I can come in here. In fact, let's go ahead and make it uh, public real quick because I just, I want to show it as it is. Uh, I've already set up an application and got some basic scaffolding going. So we're just going to run straight into this. Um, so first of all, can everybody see the text on here? Do I need to like zoom in on this a bit or let, let, let me know how it looks and I'll adjust. Um, so let me make this widget public real quick. And I'm going to shift this over to in private mode. And this form should be public. Yeah, so you can see we're not authenticated. Zoom in lots, please. Okay. Lots, like all the zooming in. Why are they both zooming in? I don't know, but my cookies are ready, so you figure yourself out. All right. Alexa, the, uh, Andrew says that he renewed his uh, car license through the DMV, and it lets him do it without an account via chat. <laughs> That's sweet. That's really cool. Um, all right, so I've zoomed in a bit. Let me know how that one looks. Um, so... For this form over here, you can see that it is unauthenticated. This is a public user. And so uh, let's go ahead and do a quick, uh, I'm gonna do hello, Sarah. You could do like hello there and do like a Kenobi. Ooh, Kenobi. Yeah. General Kenobi. So I submit, and this is a really dumb widget. It's not fancy or anything, but you can see that it's created a sys ID over here. And if I go to my incidents, you will see Gabby asks, what is a Kenobi? Oh my gosh, how do you? Mm. Hi, Paige. I see people dropping in. What? 
Paige dropped in too. Okay. Hello. Oh, we have we have friends here today. So you can see here, there's our hello there. The incident was created from the public non-authenticated endpoint. So now the next thing that I want to demonstrate is why this is so, so risky, why this is such a problem. So if I do an inspect element, I'm gonna do another submit so that I can pick up the network call. You don't have a recapture, that's really insecure. It is, it is. But if I come over here, here's the network call. So basically- What's a network call? So this is the message, the REST message that the browser is sending to the ServiceNow server. Okay. So uh, this is the actual information, the payload that's being sent to the server uh, in the exchange. And then the server sends the incident ID back, which is in this god awful payload over here. Um, but what I can do is I can grab this URL and I'm gonna paste this over in Postman. I'm not gonna zoom this one in because it's a pain in the butt for that one. Yeah, I don't, I can't really zoom in on this one much, but I'm gonna paste the URL over. I am gonna grab a couple of my headings here, not the transaction, I need the cookie. I got some cookies in the kitchen. Uh, not that kind of cookie. I'm gonna grab the user Gabby token. Wants to know what Postman is. Postman is a tool that lets you basically send these REST messages with, separate from the browser. Um, usually you'll use it when testing APIs, but it can also be used to demonstrate that I can do bad things. Um, and I want the X portal sys ID. I don't think it actually checks this portal sys ID. But what I'm gonna do is the last thing I need is the payload that I'm sending over, which this is the payload that the widget is sending. Freaking JSON. And it's just a simple JSON payload. And I am going to change the hello there to in my payload. To General Kenobi. To, sure, General Kenobi. <laughs> so I'm gonna click send on this and this is going to send the payload over Without the browser, this is a completely separate program that's sending this. And when I refresh the list, there's my General Kenobi incident. And this highlights the problem. Um, so Postman is a third party tool sending the exact same payload that we would send from the browser. It's a great way to play it, like you said, play around with it. Like I know nothing about integrations, but like Postman mm -hmm. made it really easy to uh, dive into one integration I was looking at and just play around with what the API could do. Yeah. It, it makes it not quite so scary. Right, and so when I click this submit button, I'm sending a REST API call to the server. Postman can do the exact same thing. It posts for you. Yes, it posts for you. It can also get. That wouldn't be the get man though? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but okay. so Postman um, is sending that message over the same way that the browser would. And basically what this highlights is that a third party tool, not the browser, can send these messages and create an incident. So there's nothing that stops me from creating like a Node.js script that would also create these incidents. That can send so many incidents that it floods the system and then... Yes, so like for example, if I wanted to, um, through Postman, I'm going to like click send a few times here and I'm just click, 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 clicking manually. And this is just me manually goofing off and now I've got a whole bunch of General Kenobis here. There's only one Kenobi. There is only one Kenobi. Um, Obi, one Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, so basically using Postman, I was able to just manually send a whole bunch of incidents over. So you can imagine if I wrote a script to do this, which wouldn't take me very long, um, I could basically let it run in the background. And I've actually done this before. And not only, not only have I had it generate 
a hundred thousand or so incidents in like a few seconds, but also it crashed my instant, my, my, my instance. You crashed like, a service now instance all by yourself? I've crashed a couple instances all by myself. Um, the infinite loop thing? Well, one of them was intentional because I was testing this out. A couple of the others were because I was trying to bulk upload um, attachments. And I was authenticated at that point, but I forgot to throttle my calls. And so I basically tried to upload a couple hundred thousand attachments in a period of like 30 seconds. And it didn't go well. Um... So, and Casey says, because of those issues, he made a scrappy that is called from the uh, scripted REST API that is called from the widget that has rate limiting and put a captcha on the form to be able to submit, but still scared it's not enough. So Casey, that's actually exactly where I'm going to be starting uh, today is, um, so basically there are three three main areas where we want to attempt to protect ourselves against these kinds of attacks. So um, first of all, I don't have to bombard the server and crash it. I could just basically create slow and steady wins the race. I could create a lot of cases that the workers then have to deal with. And instead of crashing the server, I could crash the service teams. Um, so there's multiple ways of doing a denial of service on this one that doesn't necessitate crashing service now, but it is possible to crash service now. And interestingly enough, um, in the original versions of CSM that supported external user registration, this was actually a defect in the base product. Um, they fixed the, it though, right? Yes, the, the newer versions of the consumer service portal um, now have rate limiting and run it through a, uh, through a REST API that is rate limited and the Google reCAPTCHA is server-side validated. Now you say rate limiting, but, and, and I know what it is, but like, can we go into like just briefly what exactly we that are, does? We're going or, to get there. I'm we're, jumping the gun. You're jumping the gun. We're, we're, we're going to get to each of these different security well, I'm not methods used to we're going to use. having a plan with these things. <laughs> Okay. Um, so... <laughs> Did you actually come to this with a plan tonight? Loosely. Oh my gosh. Loosely. That's um, not in the spirit of Code Creative Live, my friend. I mean, I have a direction, and I've talked about this over the last couple days enough that I had kind of a general direction. Yeah, that's true. But, um, so basically, what, what we want to do to try and protect ourselves is first we want to try to stop people from being able to spam submit in the first place. We want to try and prevent it as much as possible. Now, there is no 100% bulletproof way. Recaptcha can be defeated. There's um, a pregnancy joke in here somewhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, contraceptives only work 99% of the time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it is not a guarantee. And also enough people attacking at the same time could circumvent that as well. So, you know, if I have a million people submitting at once, it's just as bad as one person submitting a million times at once. Um, so, first of all, we do want to try to prevent as much as possible the ability for just a few people to spam the server. That's going to be a recaptcha uh, in most cases. With proper server-side validation, we'll go over that as we go through the it's all in the plan. This will probably be a series. I don't think we'll get to all of it tonight. Um, but then we also, when a, an attack happens, we want to be able to shut that down quickly. We want to be able to contain an attack once it happens. And then the third thing we want to do is we want to enable ourselves to be able to recover from an attack as quickly as possible. This means identify, being able to quickly identify the spam data that was submitted and being able to filter it out. Um, you know, and I actually dealt with this a little bit myself in the salary survey stuff where you know, we had some spam that was submitted and I had to be able to filter that stuff out mm -hmm. quickly. Which you did. Uh, which I did because I already had some plans in place for being able to manage that. So contraception, um, 
containment and I need another, what's the third C word? <sighs> I didn't think that far ahead. Contraception, prevention. When we publish, when we publish the book, we'll come up with it. <laughs> um, I'm going to think of it by the end of this. So, um, with that in mind. Clean up. It, clean up. There you go. <laughs> In a previous video on this, I covered a lot more in depth the recapture side and uh, some of the things that don't work. Um, right now, I want to start diving into things that can actually help and how we can get there. Um, so first of all, in this particular widget, you can see that I'm doing the um, GR over here. Don't hate me. Um, <laughs> I am doing an insert in the server script of this widget. I'm not going to do that for the version we're doing. I'm scrapping the server script. And the reason is because of rate limiting. So one of the first, excuse me, one of the first things that I want to put in place is rate limits. So ServiceNow comes equipped with rate limit rules. And what a rate limit is, is basically I can specify for a REST API, um, I can specify by individual user, by users with a specific role, or all users, I can limit the number of posts that are made uh, in, uh, I think it's a given hour. Yeah, request limit per hour. Oh, so, that's cool. So basically what I can do is I can say, you know, I have a team of three people processing this that can only reasonably handle a certain uh, a certain load. So um, <laughs> Gabby's yelling at me for GR, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, She's making fun of the people that would make would get on to you for using var GR. Oh, that's what the changing capitals means. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so. The basically what I am saying here is this script here that I am running, I'm basically saying you can only submit this a hundred times an hour. Mm -hmm. After a hundred people have submitted this in a given hour, we are going to shut this REST API down. And instead of getting the, um, do I still have my, nope, not that. Where's my inspect element? I don't think I have it anymore. Instead of getting these 200 status requests, I'm going to send a 429, basically an error saying, you shall not pass. Nice. It's the Gandalf. There you go. I dig it. The rate limit is the Gandalf. See, so... You shall not pass. In the, in the context of, um, you know, <clears throat> the public sector... You know, reporting different things and all that. I consider rate limits to be like your anti-Karen device. It keeps Karen from posting and submitting, but so many uh, nagging reports on their neighbors in yes. a certain amount of time. Yes. And, and what's cool about the rate limits is that, so the big thing that we're trying to prevent is the database inserts. The database insert, inserts are expensive, and that's the thing that ultimately crashes your database a lot faster than a get. Gets can be cached. We can you know, read that straight from memory. But inserts are slow. So we want to limit the ability to abuse the database inserts. And um, this is a tool that we can use to, to limit that because what the rate limit does is um, it tracks in memory how many times a request has been made. And it records in the database every 30 seconds. So like at most you're getting one database insert every 30 seconds. Um, and so basically this is going to help shield your database inserts mm -hmm. um, from being abused, if that makes sense. I like calling it an anti-care device. That works. So. First thing I want to do is I'm going to skip over to Studio because now I don't like Studio zoomed in. So, um, You're I don't know. Maybe I can get away with it if I like stretch this out a bit. Maybe that'll make me feel better. You don't have to use Studio. Use I like what, Studio. Use what you're comfortable with. I like Studio. I just don't like it zoomed in. Well, don't zoom in then. Scripted REST API. So, 
what I want to create is a scripted REST API, and we'll call this one public feedback. Okay, protection policy. I don't care about that right now. Honestly, I don't think it needs a protection policy because I'm happy to let people do what they want with it. Actually, no, I want read only. Don't edit it. <laughs> wow. Don't touch my stuff. Um, ACLs wise, I need to remove ACLs. And then I want to create a new resource. And this is what we'll actually be calling. Uh, and I'll just call it submit for now. And that'll be on the relative path slash submit. I'm gonna make it a post request. Uh, these are just the different HTTP methods you can use. Get is usually used to retrieve information. Post uh, is usually used for creating something new. Mm -hmm. Put is usually used for updating, I think. Patch, I don't know if it, I don't know if I've ever seen patch used. Patch day. Um, and delete, of course, is uh, primarily used to delete. Um, you can also use post for everything uh, as kind of like a remote procedure call. I honestly kind of like that approach better, but that's a matter of preference. So uh, next I need to convert our little, uh, basically this script here into the REST API. Oops. So, and yes, I'm keeping var gr. Collapse the sidebar in Studio and zoom in once. Collapse the sidebar. How do I collapse the sidebar? Arrow thingy. It's not in the zoom. same location as the, the regular. You know the, you know the, the update to the platform really threw me for a loop when hmm. they took away my sidebar? Like, and I know you can make it stick, but it's, it's just not the same. And like, I, it like traumatized me. Request.body.description and data dot, uh, that's now, that's not gonna work. So I have to change some of these service portal specific aspects to be request response base. Uh, so I'm getting the description from request instead of from input. Response dot set body. ID is going to be gr dot insert. And we'll evolve this as we go, since this is actually gonna be my good code. Now, I'm gonna keep this GR right now because Do it, we're gonna... just to like, just for the grumbling. RGR tab. And you have to tab. RGR. Oh. Oh, look at there. That was cool. Andrew Barnes bringing the knowledge. <clears throat> not like the knowledge, like. Knowledge. Not that knowledge, but like the, the information. All right, but so. But you can't do that in Service Portal Widget Editor and it drives me crazy. Oh, data.id is not gonna work, so I need to get rid of that. That should work. Read only, don't touch my stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna remove requires ACL authorization, which if you're submitting this to the store, would usually get you band sticked immediately. Um, I don't know, it's probably negotiable. GR, GR, GR. Yes, Paige, I am going to update the GR, no, but- No, like we're all making not fun right. of it. Well, like, oh. Yeah, we're just all, we're all just making fun of it because it's like one of those universal things in this industry about I'm not gonna using it. I'm going to change it though. Oh, you're, oh yeah, that tells me it's bothering you. Is it bothering you? Are you not a Javar GRP person? No, but I know that there are, I don't have a strong opinion on it either way, but I know that there are people that it upsets, so I'm going to fix it for them. Um, <clears throat> somebody edited the widget to do it. The widget editor does the little, oh. Oh, that's cool. I'll yeah. have to test that too. Um, it does that's not require nice. SNC internal. It does not require authentication. All right, so now this one should be public. So this is the URL I need to submit to. So now I wanna go in and update my widget to be able to use that. So instead of this c.server.get, I'm gonna do dollar sign HTTP and we're gonna replace this. And dollar sign HTTP is 
uh, basically c.server.get internally uses dollar sign HTTP, I'm pretty sure. And it basically does the same thing. It just sends messages, does the same thing as Postman. It just sends messages uh, to the server. <clears throat> What's Gabby saying? She's saying that if you help her edit the widget editor so you can have movable col columns, she'll make you her kid's godfather. You know, so you oh, can like, so you can drag them and yeah. move them. Wouldn't that be amazing? <sighs> it would be. It would be. Um, and I'm too lazy <clears throat> to get like the the VS Code like plugin for ServiceNow installed, so I still just use the widget editor. URL. And I don't even use dark mode, so. All right, so I am going to post to the URL that I just created. And what's cool is that HTTP post is already wired up to use like all the appropriate headers. So like mm -hmm. your user token and all that stuff is all already sent. Wait, so are you going to put this in the widget <clears throat> that you actually would put in a client instance and put like in like hard code the, the URL like that? Not yet. Okay. Well, I am going to Are I am going to build static first and then I'm going to make it more flexible. Oh. So the the key that I'm trying to focus on right now is setting up the REST APIs and the rate limits. Okay, sorry, I should once, have assumed that. Once I have that in place, then I'm going to build off of that and I will expand the widgets. My hope in the at the end of this is to have it set up to where in the page designer you can drag uh, different types of inputs onto your form using the drag and drop interface and they'll all wire up together and submit to that rest endpoint and you'll be able to control what that rest endpoint does that's so, kind of the big crazy idea so from one client to another you could just drag <coughs> a set of widgets and easily yes. configure the custom yes form. you could basically use this application in any instance to create multiple public forms and and just use one framework to do it and it will be sec as secure as i can possibly make it that's so freaking cool uh, anyway keep going so that's sorry i should have like painted the big picture at some point in the beginning that's okay i am rusty having come out of retirement yeah you and me both <clears throat> um what was i doing oh i'm posting posting so i need to send the Description. Description goes in the post body, and this is going to be C dot description, which is basically my ng model over here. And I was originally posting it in my C dot server dot get, but now I'm moving it here. And just like C dot server dot get, it is a venable. And I think it's might be no maybe I don't remember what it sends honestly so we're just gonna log it out and see what happens <clears throat> so now I should be able to get rid of the c.server.get it should be replaced with the rest API and I should be able to get rid of my server script now so bye bye and now we will test and see how this goes you're gonna try and Leet Hacksaw your way in again? Oh, no, I'm just... And it's broken. Well, why How did I break it? What did I do to break it? Do I have any errors? No. no. Troubleshooting with Travis. First, check the console. Do you have any errors? If not, cuss a little. Um, Where did you go? Finding ng repeat container classes sp row sp content. Where is my content? No I'm con supposed to have content. You can't have any content. I have no content. Hmm. I hope it's a syntax error in your HTML so I can laugh. C at you. dot submit. I mean, it shouldn't be. Mm -mm. No, that makes C sense. C dot description. Dollar sign HTTP post API controller. Um, YouTube links no work. I don't know. Have you tried reboot? <clears throat> YouTube links no work. I don't know. 
Is that it, Paige? Is that the um? There's a delay. Like, so I mean, it's gonna be a while before she. Okay, that's fine. Keep going. Um, we'll figure it out. Let me refresh. Make sure. I am not seeing. Why do you have the mobile menu up there? Uh, cause I was, I was referring to not being able to drop a URL into chat to the SP widget syntax macro oh. thingy. Oh, okay. I was like, oh no, does my stuff not work? Well, that shouldn't be it. Um, what am I missing? Mm, is there anything else you need to call up? To call or call out up there by the HTTP thing? Let's see. Let me check the widget just to be sure. Did it? It changed it from public. That's why. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. It's always something dumb. All right, let me reload that, and hopefully, hopefully the public sticks. There we go. Okay, so now I should be able to test REST API. Boring. We'll do a submit, and my. You didn't keep the Kenobi situation. Dev tools, I know, but you know, it's like. Whatever, man. Yeah. What are you looking for now? I was hoping to be able to just like take a peek and look, but I'm going to have to go to my incidents to see if it's submitted. I was hoping to avoid it. Not that one, this one. It did not. It did not? It did not. Okay, so. Inspect, let's see what's happening. Network. All right, so now that did not work, so I'm gonna try and watch the network calls on this submit. To, oh, wait. Comment out the submit. Thank you, Gabby. Yep. Oh, that's definitely it, Gabby. Yes, that 100% that was the issue. Now, as to whether or not there are other issues, we'll find out in a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna watch the network, clear it out, submit. Hey, we got a 200. So that means my incidents should now show, but it didn't pass the short description. Is it called description everywhere? Um, well, it might be Let's see, request.body.description. Let me check that message that was sent just to see. Description, yeah, it was sent. It might be a, um, I'm betting it's probably like an authentication or authorization issue because the incident table doesn't support public. So it might be related to that. But it worked earlier. That's true. It, well, the this API works differently than this API. Now I'm not. Oh wait. Eh, Share to insert. We did do the insert. We did do the short description is equal to request dot body dot description. It's because you're using var gr. Let's see. Oh, request dot body dot data. Dot description, maybe? That makes sense. Let's see. Submit. This will do it. There it is. Test REST API. Nice. So, so now we're using the REST API. And next up, I want to do a rate limit. So to do a rate limit rule, yeah, my gr.insert is in a weird place. Um, like I said, I'm going to clean that up as we go. I'm going to improve on that. 
Um, so I am going to do a really low rate limit at one to start. Use caution when applying a rate limit rule to such a large group. Well, public is a very large group. Um... <laughs> public feedback. And what was the name of this one? Public feedback. Oh, good. I'm being very consistent. All right, so I'm going to select the public feedback REST API. So I'm selecting the one that I want to limit. Um, the latest version. I'd like to point out to those in the crowd that are wondering if that noise was me making more cookies, that that was not me making more cookies. That is our 90-pound Great Pyrenees throwing his empty food bowl around because he wants more food and he's hungry. He's just a baby. He is just a baby. Anywho. Um, so then I select the resource, uh, which is the this submit here. And then I save this record. So now, what I'm expecting to happen is I'm going to send two messages. And it's not working. Uh-oh. What happened? Request limit per hour. Did it did it send over anything? Well, yes, that was more than two messages. I was hoping to exceed my request limit per hour for oh, all but users, it didn't, but it, it didn't. didn't now. Hmm, now it did sorry. not. Um, let's see. That's a lot of submits. API, CC pub form, public feedback, submit. I wonder why. I wonder if the rate limit doesn't now nah, the rate limit should work for public users surely that's that can't be the issue because that would be devastating yeah that would be i mean there's still some things we can do to try to secure it but the rate limiting is like a huge check to see if they saved the records Good point. I don't know if it saved the records or not. Yes, it is saving the records. So it is punching right through my rate limit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Andrew, Andrew says, uh, I could see that a case not apply, applying to a public user. And I don't think you can specify. Oh, wait. Hmm. Wait, I just saw. Wait, guest. Fort. Oh. Okay. Do you remember when I said there was like a 30 second delay between database updates? Oh, you did it too soon. I, won I wonder if that is the cause of it. So let's let's see now. Now, well, I reset the rate limit, so. So when you turn around and you change something about this, it usually resets the rate limit, so I don't know if that's the case or not. Let's see, rate limit violations. There is a rate limit violation in place. Still getting 200s. And it's still punching through. 
uh, Andrew Barnes has suggested, oh, and apparently that was Paige's suggestion. I didn't look uh, far enough up the chain, but to try it with an authenticated user to see if it's working. Yeah. Um, let's see. And don't forget to switch it back, the role back to all users, not just public. Wasn't a drunken public. Okay, drunk so this public. one. All right, so we want to try with all users. All right. Test authenticated. And. Let's see. Submit, 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 mm -hmm. submit. Okay, we're still punching through. So it's not a public thing, it's just not working. Still punching through. All right, well, let's give it a hot minute. Uh, rate limit rules, public feedback. No, Andrew did not have to mansplain it. Like, my eye level is right where the bottom of the stream of comments is, so it is an effort to look up at what I missed. So y'all can just hush right. with the mansplain thing. All right, I got the... I, it's, showing, it's showing rate limit counts down there. It's showing a rate limit violation for the system administrator. So now, 429. There we go. I want you to know that while you were very busy being diligent and figuring that out, um, I was dealing with harassment from the comments section because, you know, Paige is the one that suggested to, to try it with an authenticated user, but because that comment was way up here out of my line of sight, I saw Andrews first and thought it was him. And then uh, some of the others were making fun of me saying that I had to have it mansplained to me before I would listen to it. What are you doing? I am... You got it to work, though. I got it to work under authenticated. Okay. So now we're going to go back to the non-authenticated and see what we can get. Okay. And Andrew says just a delay. So that's, that's what I'm thinking is that it might be just a delay, and that's what we're going to fingers cross on. <coughs> So are we going to apply this to public again? Uh, I'm applying it to all users first to see how that goes. Okay. So I got to like wait 30 seconds. Um, also try other text each test because it might think it's the same call, says Casey. Yeah, we'll give that a shot too. See, we're doing this together. It's what Co-Creative okay. Live is all about. It is. All right. So the guest user now has a request count of two. So now, do you want your cookies? I do want my cookies. Do you want milk to go with them? Ooh, that would be lovely. All right. Best co-creative live ever. Why? Because you got cookies? Absolutely. Yeah, because usually it's like afterwards we get cookies. It is. But we've upped our cookie game recently. We have. All right, so now I'm going to try submitting. Oh, 429. It worked. It worked on public. Yay! Okay, so... Apparently, apparently, it takes some time to sort itself out. So remember that when you're testing and setting it up. So, <clears throat> so now if I change this to rate limited and submit, and then I go to the incident table, It did not submit because I got a 429 error saying rate limited. So I have now been cut off from being able to submit. And you can see that 429 status code is, well, assuming you can see this. There we go, let's zoom in. The 429 is too many requests. Um, awesome, so that's one thing that you can easily do on your public forms to ensure that people can only like, so you can at least throttle the number of times people are sitting in. So if somebody sets up a script to yes. flood you with, like, eight gazillion uh, requests, 
after the first hundred or how where, however you set that rate limit, it's going to cut them off. Right. And and what's great is that you can turn around and you can do this from like a data driven approach. Uh, Andrew says one per hour is brutal rate limiting. Make it one per day. One even per better. day. <laughs> um, and, well, and one of the things that's really cool about this is that you can start with like a higher number on the rate limit. And then if it's a, there's and, a problem, you can... Well, not, not, not if there's a problem, but what you can do is you can take like a 30-day record and you can see how many requests do I average per day and then maybe set a 90th percentile bar on a seven-day moving average or something like that. You know, you can use some statistics to calculate where should I set this rate limit? Could um, you use those statistics and use the scripting to inject the dynamic results of those calculations into set the rate limit? Probably, and I'm... Contemplating it now? I was <laughs> contemplating it before, but I'm thinking the same thing. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um... So it, because the rate limit is a record, we can use glide record and we should be able to update it. Um, I might have to like circumvent using glide query. I don't know if the cross scope privileges will give me access, but I can get around those. Um, will it be hacky? Hacky from a, if I was publishing it to the store perspective, yes. But we're not publishing this. I'm not publishing this to store. I'm publishing this to share. And there's no rules for share. And if it's share, like the wild, wild west of widgets. And if share, and if share introduces anything, then I'm just going to GitHub anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and Andrew says that process can be reasonable if you expect your interactions to be fairly normalized, but many human interactions are not evenly dispersed. And yeah, that 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 is a really good point, Andrew. Is that you know. Um, if you, ex it, it, a lot of times what you're going to deal with is you're going to deal with bursts. You're going to deal with, um, you know, Disney Plus is out. So everybody's hitting the feedback form to tell you it's out. <coughs> so like there, you, you don't want to like completely cap it. You want to be able to uh, ingest those responses. At the same time, you do want to set some reasonable thresholds where, okay, we hear you guys, we received the last million contacts telling us that this was down. Um, maybe we don't need to hear from everybody. And it also depends on whether this is a feedback form with no expectation of response versus a feedback form <coughs> with expectation of response. Um, but there are, hey Jace, um, but there are, you really have to sit down and think about where to set that rate limit because you don't want to prevent normal requests for service, but you do want to prevent malicious. abuse, yeah. malicious abuse. And with public, it's kind of hard to do that because I don't know if it distinguishes between which guest accounts. I mean, that's that's a, I mean, that's, that's the point I think where you really have to make sure that this set of widgets and yeah. this kind of functionality is um, it is catered to the needs of a specific organization. Because yeah. like, uh, and again, I just go to what I know, but a county government, yeah, if a major wreck happens and you've got this huge thing that that may cause the comment form to blow up uh, or, you know, or something like that. But on a normal day to day basis, you know, it may fall within that certain way. Right. And, so. that, and that's what Barnes is saying is, is know, know, know what your user profile is. Yeah. And he gave the example of uh, IRS stuff only happens in April. Yep. So like all, if you turn around you and did a statistic, you, you, you <laughs> it can, would be terrible for the IRS. You, well, you could set the rate limit a lot higher in the February, yes. March, April time frame because you know you're going to get a lot of incidents and stuff like that. But then like in October, eh. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is that, um, you know, you can, you can use data to drive it to some extent but you also have to understand what your usage patterns are. Um, you don't want just, 
if your user consumption does not follow a steady, even moving average, then you wouldn't want to use a moving average. Yeah. Um, you know, you would want to find what appropriate thresholds are and then set those. Jace has a really um, good question. He asked, couldn't you use a combination of things like user agents, cookies, IP addresses to mitigate some of this? I am hoping to. So um, one of the things that I want to try to do is um, try, I, I don't know how much of that is available through Glide Session, but my hope is to capture that because IP addresses is how I detected the abuse in the salary survey um, because I saw a bunch of uh, a bunch same. of entries with the same IP address, and it was it was a hey here's you know this doesn't look right, and I was able to filter it out easily based on that. Mm -hmm. um, so so yeah, you definitely can use uh, some of that to mitigate this. And that is part of the, uh, and Jace, you kind of missed it, but like there's three phases of this. One is to try to uh, prevent the abuse in the first place. That's going to be your, that's going to be your recaptchas. <laughs> Sorry, we made pregnancy um, jokes earlier on it. That's going to be your, your recaptcha type stuff. That's going to be to some extent your rate limit. Mm -hmm. um, then you want to be able to shut it down once it's in progress. Contain. And one of the things that, I want to do is make a nice easy um, button in your admin panel. Basically, a an big emergence, red button to shut a big it red off. button. Yes, and the big red button will change active to false to shut down your public endpoints. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things that we'll implement in this project as we continue. Is the big red button. Contraception um, contain Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, you know, once you detect that something bad is happening, you want to stop that throttle. You, you, you want to stop their ability to do it. And then the last step is being able to clean up the mess once you have, once the attack has abated, mm -hmm. um, to be able to restore service as quickly as possible. And your user agents, cookies, and IP addresses can do a lot to help with identifying what the junk is. Speaking of, I'd like to note that there's a plate of freshly baked chocolate chip cookies that your ADHD wife has put in front of you, and you're not going to get to eat them if you, you know, just kind of leave them there. <laughs> and now you can't talk. La 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 la. <clears throat> yeah, the cookies during Code Creative may not have been the. Uh, I mean, the, I the best happy. idea I was hoping for at the bank. <laughs> I'm happy to eat the. Well, maybe like in the future we'll pursue something that is um, where I drive, and then you can sit and eat cookies and ask questions, <laughs> and make asinine comments like I do. I mean, I can also wait till after for cookies as well. That's fine. You can't. You need to move them because I'm going to eat them. Well, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> You're sweet. I like these cookies. Anyway, so we put rate limiting in place. We've done some containment. Are there any other containment? You've misspelled limited. That's fine. Um, did you want to do any other uh, contraceptive? Activity. I haven't thought of a better C word yet. We'll get there. I, I, I do want to implement the recaptcha, but I am going to save that one for when we start building out more of the front end side of things. Um, Capture. No, because that's too that close anymore. to contain. So. <laughs> I'm going to think of it. All right. You, you keep noodling on that one. <laughs> so what's our next step? We've got right. some rate limiting in. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to try to isolate these records that are being created. So one of the one of the mistakes that I see a lot of folks do is they will jam these unchecked, unauthenticated records that could be good, could be garbage. We have no idea. They'll jam it into the incident table, or they'll jam, like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. They'll jam it into the case table. You'll see it on the case table. And the thing is, is that if you get flooded, it's you're now partially taking down your case management. Yeah. At the same time, you're taking mm -hmm. down your public interface. Constrict. 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 
So, well, the, the, the virtual agent for CSM, I know, has an anonymous case submission thing. How does it handle... How does it handle those inputs? Do they go straight? Is, they it, don't go straight to the case first, table. First of all, it is rate limited, just mm -hmm. like just like this ours is now. And then it goes um, to that uh, and interactions it, table. It goes right? to the interactions table. And interactions is kind of a mess table to begin with. I mean, it's it is designed to capture every interaction. That could be a chat interaction, which could be junk. It could be for phone calls, which could be junk. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just because you have an interaction doesn't mean you're going to be generating something else out of it. It could be them asking for information like you do with virtual agent and getting, right. you know, knowledge-based article that takes care of it. Right, so... It's kind of a safe in-between place. Yes. Where you can filter out what needs to be a case and what doesn't. Yes. But and these public forums don't have any a, a lot of times people will have them go straight to the case table or whatever and there's no barrier or buffer to like weed out the good from the bad right and there may be use cases for dumping this into the interactions table um though i still have some concerns regarding that because you know as we talked about the um the database insert is what we're worried about mm -hmm. If I turn around and tie a bunch of automated processes, let's say emails, let's say um, feedback of, mm -hmm. of, hey, thanks for, thanks for calling us. Um, how was your, you know, how was your experience? You know, if we start tying these automation processes to our public form, inserting the database Inserting a record to the database becomes a bigger issue. It's no longer just inserting one, it's generating multiple. Um, and this actually was a huge, huge issue with the original um, consumer self-registration uh, baseline. And that was part of how I downed my instance. And what was really bad was that not only did it down the instance, but when my instance came back up, I had an outbox because user self-registration sends you an email with a token to create a user account. Oh no. So my inbox was backed up with like hundreds of thousands of entries, um, which would have stopped all of my other notifications from moving. I wish you would take it a screenshot of the badge <laughs> notification on your phone because that would have been it amazing. It was horrible. It <laughs> took me forever to clean everything up. And that's one of the problems that you run into is if you let this public form spam into your, it can your process tables. It can junk it up so then the actual problems, the actual cases, the actual requests get lost in the right. sauce. Right. And, and the reality is that once the attack has finished, once you have dealt with the attack, you still have to clean up. And if you are having to clean up your case management for your authenticated users, you now have two processes down. It's not just one process anymore. You know, well, not to mention the man hours to, mm -hmm. to get through that, and that's taking away from the actual resolution of cases and everything. Right, right. So if you have to shut down your public form, your public feedback form, okay, that's not great, but that's not your customer service management system down. Mm -hmm. So basically, by shoving these into a separate table, we can shut down the, um, the public submissions for a bit. Mm -hmm. We can put a skeleton crew on cleaning up that, uh, that particular table and filtering through the junk. And then the rest of our team can continue to focus on providing the mission critical services of case management. Mm -hmm. um, and this applies to you know, other processes as well because some folks dump it straight into incident management and, and so on and so forth. Um, Casey's suggesting, as just thinking out loud, like uh, having a staging table with many records uh, or maybe a staging table with one record for each day with that large JSON payload per day with rotation, something like that. So uh, what I'm thinking on this is basically something akin to an incident table, um, mainly because I, I, like, I, I like where you're going with, the, uh, with that style staging table. Um, 
the um but one record for each day uh i don't know i don't know how 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 well that would work because i still want to process these these feedbacks individually individually so i think i still want the individual records and and i may be misunderstanding what casey's suggesting um but from from my mindset i like the incident style i just want something else and i want as minimal processing behind it as possible so how then would you what can we put in place to help clean up after an attack has happened so first i'm going to move off the incident table and we're going to and i got to zoom out a bit so i can see my create button we're going to create a custom table always with the customizing public feedback pub form Do you need to call it something else? Let's just call it public feedback staging for now. I'm just going to call it public public feedback. Be consistent? Yeah. Okay. Do you need to add a module to the menu? Yes. Yes. But I also need an application menu. I need an application menu. I didn't create one. Public mm -hmm. Feedback mm -hmm. Administration. The PFA. That sounds official. <laughs> we'll just keep it public feedback. For now. <laughs> you are having none of my suggestions tonight. I'm sorry. See, it even wants you to do admin. I created that earlier. <sighs> sorry. All right, so now I got my public feedback. So now I want to select it over here, and it's not going to let me. It's because you didn't name it right. Mer. Public feedback. Feedback. I don't need sysmeta. I don't actually want this. Uh, I mean, if you could determine spam records on submit, you would save yourself processing them. I feel like my mind is all, all over the place. Jace's mind is all over the You can't just like read comments oh, and not sorry. get context. Well, this you Jace. know. The, well, I'm like reading the comments <laughs> and stuff. You, you gotta let me do my job. Oh. I'm sorry. I see it like pop up on the side and I get distracted. It's, it's, you're the one that's supposed to stay focused. It's my job to get distracted. I have limited focus. That's true, especially at this point of the day. All right, allow configuration, allow access via web services, accessible from all applications, scopes, caller tracking. This is just how, from a scoped application standpoint, this is how I like to set it up. That's right. Jay My says lane your is, lane is making stuff. I did it again. I'm uh -huh. sorry. Yeah, you did. Because <laughs> I like using their comments as ammo to like poke at you with. I feel like pub is likely to be used. So I'm going to go PBF. That sounds like a beer. It does. I'm okay with that. Because, nope, not that one. Are we like, are we like, um, non-alcoholic life code happy hour? Because we always have like cookies and milk and we don't have alcohol. <laughs> um... Do we need to switch to alcohol? I think that makes us like rated G, life code happy hour. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Casey says pub is used in publication, targeted communications plugin. Thank you. Yes, that one just felt like one that would be used somewhere else and ServiceNow does not like number prefix collisions. So I feel like PBF is probably safer. PBJ, peanut butter and jelly. Why do I always go back to food? <laughs> you do go back to food a lot. This is like this is like live code happy hour for hobbits. So we're gonna do a short description, and that's going to be a string. Well, no, we're gonna do description on this one because we're likely to be ingesting the text area fields. 
So we'll do string UTF-8 support, I think, is what I want there. And I also want a state field because having automation on this table is not a bad thing, but we want a creation state where there's little to no automation. We, we want there to be some kind of manual intervention or scheduled job intervention. We want something that is going to buffer our database insert from our automation. I want you to know that Gabby has just dubbed us SFW, Safe for Work, Live Code Happy Hour. <laughs> and um, Jace has an idea. Separate system hand to handle the public stuff and just pipe it into service. Now, that yes, is actually, okay. yeah. Yes. Sorry. I'm, no, I'm glad he brought that up because that is actually something that a number of federal agencies do yes. in order to help protect themselves. Like yes. the example that you were telling me about, which is not um, surprising. Border Patrol is one of the big ones that I know does this. Like, who um, would want to send so, Border Patrol a bunch of bad messages? So, like, you know, highly politicized governmental organizations at the federal level they already know they're going to get targeted. And so they actually, uh, Border Patrol actually has a completely separate ServiceNow instance that ingests their public form intake stuff. And it's separate from their internal process stuff. Um, and this is, uh, Jace brought this one up, and th this is a phenomenal this strategy. Was a, this was a big part of our conversation earlier. Yes. We need yes. to just start like recording us all on, the day. On LinkedIn, I dropped like a huge freaking blurb full of strategies for mitigating. And, and I'm sorry, y'all. It was totally my fault because uh, I'm the one that started <laughs> the conversation about the anonymous forms, and we got it's because you know it's been an ongoing topic of conversation for us working on this platform and. I got him all spun up. <laughs> so having a separate system that ingests the public stuff is a strategy. Some folks use separate service now instances. Jace mentions that you could have like Surve Sur Survey Monkey, and that's uh, certainly some options as well. Um, so there are Yeah, there are a lot of services. There are there are a lot of different techniques that you can use. Um, I just wanted to come up with something that was baked into ServiceNow because, you know. Well, yeah, and there, I mean, there's other things that people use. Like you were telling me about the use of Cloudflare to uh, vet some of this stuff before it gets in. Yeah, there, there are a couple of counties that I am aware of that I don't want Disney Plus Home. I want Disney Plus You go Plus to the bottom, look in the uh, footer. I don't care. I do it through Google. Ugh. So you notice up here slash CSP, uh, it might be hard to see because I'm not zoomed in on this one. You can't zoom in a little bit. I can't zoom in up there, but this is a ServiceNow instance. And where are you? Give feedback. Public unauthenticated form. So um, this is a ServiceNow instance with public unauthenticated form. So bottom line, a lot of people are doing this. Big names are doing this, and they're doing it on the ServiceNow platform. So my goal is to provide a tool and a resource that people can use on platform since people are very insistent on using the platform. And it's not, it's not a bad idea if you do it well. The problem is there's too many examples of it being done with no security at all. Um, and uh, the... And you don't have to be like a, a hot button political federal agency to have this happen to you. You know, like the frickin', uh, you, know, you know, we see a lot of even local county commissions, school boards making choices that are wildly unpopular. And even down to cities, um, all it takes is for one thing to go viral on Reddit or on the news and you've got the attention of the entire world and they're going to knock down your doorstep and submit all this bad data to shut you down because of something that they don't agree with. So this really could happen to anybody. Yeah, I, I, I want to say during the pandemic, I think it was uh, like Ohio unemployment or something like that turned mm -hmm. around and 
um, put a fraud, waste, and abuse form out there. And people got really upset with it because they felt like it was a report your neighbor type tool. And people were really, really pissed off about it. Mm -hmm. And um, a bunch of people got together on Reddit, realized that the Google reCAPTCHA was implemented improperly, and they flooded it until their, uh, uh, until their website died. That one was not ServiceNow, uh, but that was one of the ones I got to watch in recent history where uh, I, got to watch an inst uh, I got to watch an application get absolutely buried in real time. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, like just an unpopular action can result in people hunting these forms down to flood. And it does not take people long to figure this stuff I out. I mean, come on. I have seen so many businesses, um, get really, oh, like for instance, when I worked at the city of Daphne, right? Um, there was a misunderstanding. There was a group of, uh, I, I forget the exact details, but there was a group of people sitting in a parking lot and... I think it was the mayor himself had come by and was trying to clarify something, but they went to the news with the incorrect statement that the mayor, who is not the sitting mayor, the sitting mayor is a wonderful man. He's doing good things for the city. Um, but uh, not that the other guy was bad. It's just he's the one that this unfortunate thing happened with. Um, but, like, th they went to the news media with da the city of Daphne doesn't let you fly the American flag. So our Facebook page. That was so funny. And, and mind you, I was in the I mean, clerk's office, so I had, you remember me coming home like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Our little town of 15,000 or, or like 20,000 people or whatever. People were, were putting bad reviews. These are people who have never been to Daphne, didn't know Daphne existed, but it got on the news and it went viral. And our Facebook rating for the city's Facebook page went like just absolutely tanked. Because people will believe what they hear and they will maliciously submit whatever, you know. It wasn't true and we cleared it up, but, like, the damage was done. And, and so it doesn't take much at all. So it's better to be safe and assume that it is going to happen to you at some point than, you know, not worry about it and risk an even worse result when it does happen sorry i could go on it just it just hit me that oh my gosh i have dealt with this before <laughs> sorry we gotta catch up on the comments now but that's my job gosh. yes we uh J jace asked uh he said so i'm sure you're planning on implementing all all the things to be safe all and things. yes we're going to implement as much as we reasonably can into this application um, to try and secure it as much as possible short of stuff like separate service now instance and short of um, using Cloudflare uh, mm -hmm. CDN um, to, to intercept and deflect. Are they all the small things? Yes. All the small things. <laughs> anyway, CAPTCHA, human test, disallowing spam stuff, content links, honeypot. These are all things that Jace has mentioned mm -hmm. as potentials. A couple of those I don't know if I'm entirely familiar with. Let's see. I know CAPTCHA. I know Honeypot. Uh, HTTPS, of course. Um, disallowing spam stuff. And there's all this... kinds of things you can do, especially if you're allowing them to submit attachments. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so, Jace mentions disallowing spam stuff. And... I'm very interested in that one. I don't know if we'll get to that or not, but Bayesian spam filters is something that really intrigues me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm I'm interested. I, I would love to make something like that happen in this. I don't know if it's going to happen or how long it will be, but uh, but that does interest me. We'll have to get there. Um And in case you're wondering, Bayesian spam filters are, uh, it, it's a probabilistic model that is used by most spam filters. Like most of your email spam filters uh, use Bayesian probabilities to figure out whether or not it's spam. Um, let's see, where was I? Feedback ID. Set body, feedback ID. We'll set with that for now. 
and let's go to my rate limit and increase it because one is not going to do. 500 sounds good. All right, so now I should be able to resubmit this and it should go to my new table. Submit. And public feedbacks. I hate when you make put when you make uh, custom tables in your instance. It gives you this really, really long table name with all the prefix and everything. I can't just name my table like test underscore table. So in the application search bar, I can't be like test underscore table dot list and you know be lazy. Choices. You're not listening to a word I'm saying. <laughs> no. <laughs> GDPR is out of scope. Jace is like adding on. Jace has got a wish list going for us. I'm loving all these ideas though because it, it brings to light how many things can be done and have been devised that we might be able to implement for public forms on ServiceNow to help make them more secure. We'll keep it consistent. So what are you doing? I'm adding some states. North Carolina. Not that kind of state. Oh. You know, when we moved to Alabama, like, nobody had ever heard that song by Pete Pablo. It was the most disappointing thing in my life. Okay, I did it by string. Configure dictionary. We're going to set the default of that to new. New. Update. Delete. Delete. Submit. There we go. All right, so now it's inserting these in the new state. And because this is a custom table, we have no automations running off of it whatsoever. So now we have a nice little containment area for all of our public junk. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Pending and processed are better. And we keep the alliteration thing going, and you know it. Do it. Do it. But or, you're, or you're going to do it later. Okay, we'll keep going, but we're going to do it later. Because this is going to be a multi-part thing. But. But. Shh, it's okay. But that says new. What about case management? Are you still looking to name your states? Yes, it's important. Um, I just want a case. Fine, product case. I just want a you case. You don't have your demo data in there? Where's the state? There's no state. Um, all the dissatisfied. <laughs> Configure dictionary and state. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. See, Jace I'm wants to know why we were stuck on C words before because, uh, Jace, I was comparing what we were doing to like, you know, prevention and, you know, preventing the stuff from coming in. And it struck me that the language we were using was very similar to the language you use in like preventing pregnancy and stuff like that. So contraception. And then I was like trying to think of C words off of that. And it just went downhill from there. They hide the state on cases, Casey says, because they're monsters. Yeah, I'll believe that. What do you say? He said that they hide the state field on the case form because they're monsters. Ah, yes. Feedback.get. Man, you mentioned Ohio, and now that song is stuck in my head. There's nothing wrong with Ohio. Um, so I was thinking about having it return the feedback number. 
That will require... That will... Re I don't know. We will have to te test some public-facing security on this particular table mm -hmm. for me to do this. There's nothing wrong with the tail. Except, Except the, the snow, snow and the rain. rain. That's Bowling for Soup, isn't it? Yep. Yep. It's a great song. Come back to Texas. All right. Let's see. All right. So at this point, we've got table. We've got rest endpoint. Mm -hmm. We've got good isolation. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got rate limiting in place. Mm -hmm. And from that isolated table, you could like turn it into a case. Yeah. So like I could easily add UI actions or add, uh, other stuff to this table, um, so that, you know, somebody could turn around and take a look at that record, decide that this does need to go to our case management process and send it there. Mm -hmm. Um, but having that buffer is going to help insulate and protect your case management process from your public form submission. Genius. Um, <clears throat> now, at this point, I am fairly happy with the, at least the basics of the server side so far. This seems like a good um, point to like. Yeah, I think, I think this is going to be a good stopping point for tonight. So let's review. Um, one thing I want to check before we review. Network. Zoom out a little bit for me so I can read things. And we will zoom in as appropriate. Let's check the payload or the response. Okay, cool. So the response is now sending the number of the thing generated. Because I've seen a lot of customers will turn around and return the number back and say... Yeah. Hey, here's the... Here's your incident number in right. case you call back later and are like, yo, right. why didn't you fix this? So I'm going to include that in that payload. Now, at this point, um, we've got a pretty good server-side setup. Um, <clears throat> our REST endpoint has the rate limiting. Mm -hmm. And in case you're wondering... To the best of my knowledge, no, you cannot rate limit the server scripts of the widgets, mm -hmm. which is why I moved all of the logic out of that server script. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you could rate limit it, you would probably be rate limiting all the service portal widgets because they all hit the slash SP slash rectangle yeah. uh, endpoint. So, so we moved all that logic to a scripted REST endpoint. Mm -hmm. We made that scripted REST endpoint unauthenticated. Mm -hmm. And we put rate limiting rules on it in order to protect it from being abused uh, by too many posts in a given hour. So even before we hit the idea of a recaptcha, these are some things in place. Yes, yes. Uh, we haven't even gotten to the front end recaptcha, and we already have some stuff in place that's going to protect. Mm -hmm. Because we isolated our table, our case and incident management process tables are separate and that's going to help us to um you know prevent the spam from hitting directly into our mainline processes it mm -hmm. gives us a bit of a buffer and gives us an opportunity to sort out the junk data um now <coughs> next time um Z. next time on dragon ball z ah <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I just want to note that, Jason, Casey, you're having a very interesting little conversation in the chat about the idea of spam detectors and all that. So we may have to look into that in a future episode of dealing with this right here. Yeah. But uh, so next time, what will our next step be? Well, we've got two different directions that we can take next time. And we'll probably end up deciding that offline. Um, but on one hand, we could pursue more of the server side basically using the Glide session information uh -huh. and trying to extract information such as IP address, uh, user agent, you know, stuff that might help us identify who and what is sending this. Yeah. Um, and that would obviously help us to group spam and discard it in the event that we do get hit with an attack. Um, 
Included in that would also be implementing the big red button server side. So those are a couple things we could do. And on the other hand, um, we've got creating the form inputs and the Google reCAPTCHA stuff client side, um, which I want to do in a way that allows us to use Service Portal's drag and drop interface to build the forms yeah. uh, rather than having to do it, you know, Manual. Well, right. I mean, because this is a custom thing, you know, you can't yes. just like plop a service catalog item <clears> in there. Yeah. So when you're rolling that custom form and all that good stuff, yeah, like to have some kind of control over that so you're not having to fiddle with that code every single time. Right. Because, nice. I mean, one of the first things that happens when a, let's take the, uh, uh, the consumer self-registration form as an example. There's no real way to edit it or add additional inputs to it. The yeah. form is what it is. Mm -hmm. So if you want to change it, the first thing that you have to do is clone that widget. I want to try and avoid that in this application because if you have to clone something, you're liable to make mistakes. Um, one, one customer um, that I worked with in the past turned around and cloned one of the original ones back when the error was still in place. Uh -huh. oh, no. And if now, of course, I turn around and I fixed the reCAPTCHA for their implementation, so the reCAPTCHA was working, but they don't have rate limiting on theirs oh. because I don't even know if the rate limiting was in that version. Mm -hmm. um, I, at the very least, wasn't aware of it in that version. Uh, I, did, I only learned about the rate limiting more recently. Um, but when ServiceNow updated the consumer self-registration, mm -hmm. They're still using the cloned widget. So they're not getting those updates. They're not getting those updates. Which is why you be careful about what you clone. Mm -hmm. And that there are and, certain widgets you don't mess with. And that's why I want to try and build this in a way so that you can edit the forms without having to edit the forms. Mm -hmm. You know, making it so that you can do user land stuff nice and easily without having to dive into the complexities of the back end, which provides all of the security elements. Yep, yep. Um, so next time we can go in one of those directions and uh, we'll probably figure that out offline. That sounds like a plan. All right. Can I make your form look good? Because it's kind of lame. Oh, yes, yes. I thoroughly expect you to help on the design front. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, y'all have a good night. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us, and uh, have a good night. Bye. That's Nathaniel. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys.